What's up everyone? Swain here. We're going to be doing another Summoner's War video and today we're going to be looking at Dragon's Lair B10. The infamous, the amazing legendary dragon. Okay. Tough stuff. Seriously, this is a tough dungeon. So let's get going here. And uh, so this is my main team that I use. Um, so we'll be taking a look at the runes and why I chose each monster for um, for this dungeon um, after the run is completed. Hopefully, no one will die. Sometimes, you know, different monsters die, but even if they do, usually this has a very, very high success rate. Over, well over 95% success rate, guys. So this is a surefire team that'll that'll do the trick if you kind of do things how I do it here. So. Why Dragon's B10? I'm just going to cut right to the chase. Why farm Dragon's B10? Because of violent runes. <laughs> right? Everyone wants violent runes. And everyone wants violent runes because everyone knows that they're the best runes in the game. Which, hands down, they are. Um, I mean, they just are. There, there's no question about it, guys. They're, they are so, so stinking good. Violent runes are the endgame rune of choice the end game rune of choice, I'm sorry, by basically every single player that's ever played this game, okay? I'll be honest, when I first started playing Summoner's War, oh no, don't lag, okay. When I first started playing Summoner's War, I thought Violent Runes were the biggest piece of crap I'd ever seen. I was like, why on earth would you want to gamble, you know, trying to get more turns? Like, why not just use Swift? It's like a consistent... You know, you can rely on it. It's, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I didn't get it, guys. I'll be honest. I had no idea. Okay, when I first started playing this game, I had knew nobody, nobody else that played it, okay? I even introduced it to some of my friends, and they, and they were like, dude, this is stupid. And I was like, no, it's not. This is awesome. And... <laughs> that's a that's a funny story i'll tell i'll tell some of those stories at some point but um you know i was like what the heck this is not you know why why are violent runes any good and i didn't even know that you could get violent runes from these dungeons and i thought that farming these dungeons was kind of stupid too because i was like this doesn't make sense you can just get runes from the scenario maps and stuff like that and let me tell you guys i was a confused little player when i first started out but then again who wasn't right anyway Violent runes. That's the answer. That's the answer to the question. Why do dragons be 10? Violent runes. Okay. As you'll notice, some of my monsters are actually using violent runes to complete <laughs> the run. Okay. So that's kind of a paradox, which is maybe not a paradox. An oxymoron maybe is a better better word for it. But okay. Now, um, in addition to violent runes, there's also a lot of other really good kinds of runes that you can get through Dragon's B10. Most namely, in my opinion, the two best other kinds of runes, or I'm sorry, actually they're all pretty good, but you can get Vampire Runes, which are great for monsters um, that you need to farm, um, you know, for EXP, doing scenario maps, um, you know, fantastic. And even for dungeon monsters, Violent Runes are really, I mean, sorry, Vampire Runes are very good. Um, will runes are phenomenal for monsters that you need to get their first skill off in the beginning of a battle, regardless of whether the, mon the enemy monsters put you to sleep or stun you or whatever like that. There's nemesis runes, which, you know, you put those on a monster like Varamos and they become very difficult to kill because as you decrease their health, their attack bar increases and then they can use their abilities or their passives or whatever it is that that activates when their turn starts and boom you know you start moving quicker when enemies attack you which is not a bad thing at all you got shield runes which you know those are really niche you know it's difficult to to really use those in a proper way but they definitely have quite a bit of use um, specifically i would say in arena and maybe some guild war stuff too those kind of go hand in hand um, but yeah, so that's, oh, Chloe died. Sorry, Chloe. Oh, well, we don't need you anymore. As a matter of fact, actually, Lumarisha can solo this whole thing by herself at this point. Fun fact. So the rest of these guys can die and it doesn't matter, basically. But hopefully they won't just so you can see them in action a little bit more. 
and specifically Vramos because he's really important. We'll we'll talk about him pretty extensively um, at the end of this run here. So that is why you should be farming Dragon's B10, okay? Not only that, but why should you be farming B10 instead of B9 or B8 or B7 or, God forbid, B1, okay? Don't, I mean, you can farm B1 if you want, but maybe don't. Um, anyway, <laughs> the higher along you go, okay, in in the dungeon. Oh, don't dive, Ramos. Don't do it. Oh, it's lagging. Lagging. Uh-oh. Belladion just just hit the hit the pooper. Okay. It's all right. We won this. All right. This is it. Game over. Um just a matter of time now for the dragon to take his dots and go out. So laggy. I'm sorry, guys. Very laggy. Very very laggy. Maybe we'll get that fixed later. So anyway, back to what I was saying. The higher dungeon that you do, okay, the better stuff you get, basically. So and Dragons B10 and Giants B10 and all these sorts of things are no exception to this, all right? So you get six star runes from the dragon significantly more often than you do the other the other uh you know, levels and things like that that you could be farming, okay? So I think that there's been a lot of research done on this and um, there's approximately a 10 to 15% chance for a six star rune to drop. Okay. And let's see what we get. What do we get? What do we get? Garbage. We're going to sell that. We don't want that. Okay. No, that's okay. Um, so B10, okay. B10 will drop six star runes much, much, much more frequently than even B9, okay? You could do B9 if you had to, but B10 is a lot better than B9. And B9 is actually a lot better than B8, and B8 is quite a bit better than B7, and so on and such what, okay? So six-star runes start dropping at B7, maybe B6, okay? But it's very, 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 very low at B6, okay? So if you can, you know, when you're kind of doing stuff, get B7, um, and then you work your way up as you go, okay? B10 is the ultimate goal because, of course, you get six-star runes much more frequently, which is just, you know, there's very few things that are bad about that. So let's, um, hopefully that gives, that you know, that gives you guys um, some info about why Dragons B10. Now let's take a look at my team. Um just kind of look at their runes and um you know so first off here we've got Konomiya okay Konomiya is awesome now he is a monster that you can actually get from secret dungeons you can buy him in the magic shop you can do all sorts of stuff so I have him ruined um like such if you want to look at the runes a little bit more in depth just pause the video and you can look at each of these a little bit more uh more deeply if you want to um why is he used this skill okay peace removes all harmful effects on all allies and recovers hp by 15 percent which actually goes up to approximately uh about 20 percent 19.5 percent from that skill okay that gets rid of all the dots that the dragon uh puts out okay the number one thing that you need to be thinking of when you're creating a dragon's b10 team okay, is how am I going to get rid of these damage over time effects that the dragon's going to put on my monsters? Or how can I prevent them from getting onto my monsters to begin with, okay? Now, the best two ways to do this are using a monster like Konomiya, who removes all harmful effects, or, okay, using a monster like Chloe, okay? Now, her third skill is Infamous, Fanatic, okay? All allies become invincible for one turn and gain immunity for two turns, okay? Now, immunity, as you guys know, prevents harmful effects from getting onto your monsters, okay? So that is why Chloe is really good for, um, you know, Dragon's B10. And even other, all sorts of other B10 dungeons is because she protects your team with invincibility and she gives immunity, okay? So this, she really helps out with... Um, you know, getting rid of dots, um, 
well, actually really preventing them from happening in the first place. And she has this great little heal, okay, that heals two allies, just not for a ton, but uh, for enough, guys. It, it really does help, you know. So those two are some great examples of that. And now let's take, oh, I'll show you her runes, okay. I have her swift will. Um, will is for arena purposes, of course. Not very useful for dungeons, but hey, whatever. And now let's talk about Bramos for a second. He deserves a very, very special mention, okay? Varamos, you can get through Monster Fusion, as you guys know, okay? And he is come to us as gift, okay? For those of us who really, really, really want to farm Dragon's B10. As a matter of fact, just dragons in general, okay? Now, that's because of this passive right here. Removes one harmful effect on all allies every turn, except for inability effects. So that's stun, freeze, sleep, okay? Those are the only exceptions to this. And recovers, like, he recovers his own HP by 15% if a harmful effect, if a harmful effect is removed. It can be from anyone, and he heals himself for 15% of his max HP, which is phenomenal, okay? We'll take a look at his runes. Um, so I I love violent runes on him because um, it really, you know, if you get multiple dots on there, you can get a couple lucky procs with him, and bam, you know, all of a sudden all your dots are gone, and it's awesome, okay? Same with Konomiya, okay? Konomiya, I have violent runes on him as well, as I'm sure you saw, which are incredibly helpful, okay? So those are his stats. That's that's why he's used, okay? Um, who else do I use? I can't remember. Lumarisha. She's my leader, okay? She's the leader that I use, and she is awesome, okay, because she can actually solo the dragon completely by herself after the left tower gets taken out, Okay? The left tower needs to be taken out in order for her to really do her thing, because um, otherwise she can get she can get uh, dotted up and die. Okay, but she does damage over time, and Ramos does damage over time with his first skill too. Okay, second skill doesn't do anything hardly for dragons runs, but then she has this heal. Okay, that completely recovers a target's HP that's reusable in five turns. Phenomenal. That's how she can solo the dragon. Is she does dots, and then she heals herself, does dots, heals herself, so on and such what. And this leader skill provides her with 50% more resistance in addition to all other water ally monsters, which makes the um, acquire, 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 whatever the acquiring, there we go. <laughs> I can't talk ever. How terrible is that? Makes the acquiring of dots a lot less problematic because you just don't get them as frequently because of the resistance, okay? Which is really, really good, all right? And um, that she pairs so well with Konamiya. These two are like peas in a pod. Peas in a pod, peas in a pod. Lumarisha, Kona, peas in a pod, right? Awesome. Super, super great. And last but not least, let's talk about Bella Dion. Bella is just so good. I I actually just recently six starred her for uh Dragon's Runs. I've actually used um my Darian as well. Um you know, just for damage reduction and defense break. Defense break is super important to me during these runs cuz then you hit a crystal and all of your monsters will hit the same crystal that has the defense break on it, which provides a lot of um consistency in your in your Dragon's Runs, which is phenomenal, okay? I have him ruined as such. Violent focus. Um, very, very happy with these runes that are on Bella right now. Her accuracy could be a little higher for sure. You know, getting it up into the 60s or 70s would be ideal, but her survivability is super high. And her runes, as you saw, weren't even maxed yet. So really, really great. And um, she, I, I use Bella for defense break mainly, but her... Um, you know, being able to heal the entire team and, um, you know, increase their attack bars with mobilize is just phenomenal. Synergizes really, really well with the entire rest of the team just with, you know, even Ramos, okay? 
these two synergize with the, each other excellently because you know Bella increases his attack bar and when he goes you know removes beneficial effects on Bella and all your other monsters and so it works out great so um, this team is super super consistent 95% you know success rate minimum um, it could even be higher than that quite honestly guys um, really really excellent and um, you know I've gotten a lot of great runes from uh, from dragons no doubt about it it is the place to go for really high end runes um, giants b10 is also a great place to go which I'll make a separate video for that but um, let me know if you guys have any questions comments um, if I failed to explain something super consistently um, I'm actually going to be posting some awesome links in the description that are going to provide some more um, details on Dragon's B10, how to farm it, and um, give you guys some help um, if you're struggling building a team for yourself. And um, also feel free to ask me any questions um, about you know team building or anything like that if you're having problems. Um, I have gone through a couple of different teams actually and this is my most recent and I think most successful team so I have a good idea of what works and what doesn't um, so yeah please you know like I said please ask me or uh, click on the link that I have in the comments or not the comment section the description so I will see you guys later and uh, I will talk to you all later don't forget to like comment and subscribe Swain out